Lawrence. Welcome back to the final part of tonight's show. Ashing Larkin is hard at work in the kitchen already. Ashing, remind us what's on the menu tonight. Yes, we are doing monkfish with langoustines or Dublin Bay prawns uh, in a creamy chorizo sauce. And we're going to do a little bit of char grilled garlic bread as well. So I'm actually going to start with the bread. So what I have is just a little pastry brush, a little bit of sourdough. And you know me, I'm always trying to get us like one step closer to healthy. So I'm using just a little bit of olive oil. And this is a, it's a multigrain or a whole grain bread. And I'm just going to put those on a griddle pan and char them. So you can do this on a barbecue just as easily. You can just toast them in the oven, but the little charring effect is a little bit nice. So I'm gonna pop those on for a second. Then in my pan here, I already have sweating off. One onion, three cloves of garlic, and there's about 50 grams of chorizo in there, okay? So what that's been on now for about six minutes. And what we're trying to do is just get that lovely caramelization out of the onions and just get all that natural sweetness out that's going okay. to complement the lovely fish that we have. Uh, okay. So, I have monkfish, okay? No, I'm starting it's not off a deer fish. It is. Mm. You know what it is. Um, it's about 26, 28, 30 quid a kilo, right? So, yes, out of all of the fishes, it's the most expensive one that you can buy. Um, it's Irish, though, and it's really sustainable. Like, we're catching a lot yeah. of it and in it's Ireland. Gorgeous. It's what? And it's gorgeous. It's oh, Martin, it's beautiful. Like, it's so meaty, and that's why it works. So I was doing a bit of testing with this recipe, um, and I was trying to see would Pollock work? and would cod work, just as a, like a cheaper alternative, okay. and they didn't. They okay. fell apart, they just fell apart. So keep those for fish cakes, keep those for battered fish, they just didn't work in this. So you do need the meatiness of the monkfish. Um, so I'm well, putting are these gonna, you know with monk, monkfish, the first time we cooked them, we were all shocked. It wasn't me, it was someone who could actually cook. And it was like, we put them in the oven, they just shriveled up, you know, they really, the monkfish. Yeah. Yeah. So it has a little membrane on it, right? So yeah. get your fish monger. Like, I mean, I can't say this enough. And we were having this conversation before the show. We are starting to get so much better at making friends with our butcher, making friends with our fruit and veg, mm -hmm. make friends with your fish monger. He will debone it. He will skin it. He will take the membrane off. So if I ever get monkfish, I'll always just say to him, will you do me a favor? Will you take the membrane off? the monkfish. So that's kind of what, it's almost like an elastic and as it cooks it shrivels and that's kind of what like shrivels it up a little bit with the monkfish. It'll cause this kind of curl. Monkfish always yeah. curls when you cook it. Um, so it'll just stay a little bit flatter. It does. I mean, they all, they all shrink a little bit, particularly when you're cooking them like this. Monkfish is beautiful on the barbecue as well. So this yeah. one's a little bit, it's a little bit more special in terms of, um, you know, a lovely, a really nice dish, I guess, that you want to cook. So that's going to cook away. Then I've got my prawns, okay? So I have my what we know as langoustine or Dublin Bay prawns. So again, these are super sustainable. They're Irish um, and they're plentiful. Again, they're expensive. Okay, they're not like relatively cheap. If you buy them like... Dish. It's what? It'll be a nice treat dish. Absolutely. And that's it. It's kind of, if you're going out to a restaurant, you'd be getting it. So it's just a way of cooking it at home, I think, which is really, yeah. really nice. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna show you how to shell the prawns, but before that, I'm just gonna rock on with the sauce a little bit. I have a fish stock cube, okay? This is totally optional. I'm literally putting in a quarter of a stock cube, just to give it a little bit of flavor, right? Yeah. Into that is gonna go about four tablespoons of wine or water, either one works. The sweetness of the wine is lovely, with the sweetness of the onions and the sweetness of the prawns, but water is fine. So if you're, okay. you know, you don't want the wine, it's no problem. And then I'm gonna put in four tablespoons of cream. So you would imagine that a dish like this would take so much more yeah. cream than that, but actually it doesn't at all. So four tablespoons of cream, so you get that rich velvety creaminess, you get that okay. delicious, luxurious feel, mm -hmm. but it's only four tablespoons of cream between four people. Yeah. So it's actually really, really mild. So I'm gonna pop that on for a second, I'm just gonna let that cook, and I wanna show you the prawns, right? So. Scampi, originally these are what like scampi was. These are Dublin Bay prawns, Dingle, Killybegs, Helvic. So they're, they're a really yeah. good Irish prawn to use. So they have a shell, so the heads have been taken off these. So you just want to take the shell off, pull it at the bottom. Now, this is the hard part, and this is what puts people off. Mm -hmm. So if this part's put you off, buy them. You can buy them already deveined de and deshelled, yeah. right? Yeah. But you get better, you get more bang for your buck if you're prepared to do, do a little work. bit of work at yeah. home. And it was so funny, these were so fresh. I picked them up yesterday. They were so, so fresh. I had my two little girls standing at the counter yesterday, like shelling prawns. Now, I'm not saying they did a wonderful job, but they were <laughs> shelling prawns nonetheless. But because they were so fresh, there was like, there was no smell. You know, sometimes it's that yeah. fishy smell that kind of puts people, I mean, they were so fresh. So get them when they're just absolutely... Were the heads already off? 
Heads were off. So I was my fish I was like, I can't imagine me with Isabella the heads being off. like, I'm not doing this, yeah. man, with the no, head off. No, they loved it and the Brilliant. feel of them and everything. So it's, look, it's, it's all those things. The little intestinal tract, right? That l doesn't visually look so good. Yeah. So it's just really, really nice to just pull that out, cut it out. It's really slippy with the gloves. I can't do it. But I have a selection of them here that I've done Beautiful. previously, right? Do try and take them out. Um, that's it. They're literally, they're kind of steaming and almost poaching in the liquor here. And in whatever, two more minutes, like that is going to be fully, fully cooked. You could add um, dill into this. So as we're frying off the onions and the garlic, you could put in your dill there. I've tried it with dried herbs. You know me, I, re I love using dried herbs. I think they're great, but they didn't work. They genuinely so didn't work. It has to be the fresh. So use fresh dill or fresh parsley. Um, either one is a way. You see the lovely char yes. you get? You just get that beautiful kind of crispy. Mm. And then clove of garlic and just rub your garlic over the top. Um, and it just gives it that lovely garlicky kind of flavour and taste. And then we're going to serve right. them with so a without really using nice the side actual salad. butter, you've just thrown some olive oil on it. Olive right. oil. Yeah, really, really healthy again. Um, some lovely fresh parsley, which I'm just going to tear up here. Flat leaf parsley oh. or dill, really, really nice. Chives is the other one. Any of those work really well. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'm also thinking of the bang off you after you've had something with five cloves of garlic in it, so the parsley, parsley? is good for getting rid of that. Exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's a, like a natural, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, Takes your takes away the bad breath. Yes, yeah, yeah doesn't it? So and there is a word a for cleanser. that. There is. I don't know what it is right now. Well, I'm, just <laughs> that, I'm just calling it a cleanser. <laughs> Works for me. Oh, oh guys, look at that. Right off with her word. Her. Is that um, not just so beautiful? And it's just creamy, and it's delicious. And you can dip your bread and scoop your bread and mop up all that sauce. It cooks that quickly. Like it's so so quick. And that's real time. And it's. Just, I mean, that to me is summer in a pan. Your local, sustainable Irish seafood. And I think we probably just do need to make a little move to that. And yeah. I mean, that's it. It's just and divine. For, for a date night at home. Yeah. yeah. Little it's squeeze so of lemon on top, a little bit of fresh parsley dish. on top. And it's, it's lovely. So like we said, it's a little bit more expensive, the fish we're choosing. Yeah. But they're Irish fish and they're sustainable fish. And my God, like the sweetness from those langoustines from the prawns. Like Rick Stein says, some of the best prawns in the world are, yeah. are langoustines. And we do know that the, you know, it has been very hard for, for people in the fishing industry around Ireland totally. at totally. the moment. So any sort of support that people can actually do. We've lost a huge amount of our quota, absolutely. So we need to try and support, support. sustainable yeah. Irish fish where we can. Where yeah. we can. This looks... I can't, so, I can't wait to I love it. when she knows she's nailed it. She's just, she looks so unbelievably happy. <laughs> oh, and as you can have this on her Instagram page, I'll put it on mine as well. And of course, you can find it on 6 okay.